Aspens by Edward Thomas, 1878-1917. All day and night, save winter, every weather, above the inn, the smithy and the shop, the Aspens at the crossroads talk together of rain until their last leaves fall from the top. Out of the blacksmith's cavern comes the ringing of hammer, shoe and anvil. Out of the inn, the clink, the hum, the roar, the random singing, the sound that for these fifty years have been. The whisper of the aspens is not drowned, and over the lightless pain and footless road, empty as sky, with every other sound not ceasing, calls their ghosts from their abode. A silent smithy, a silent inn, nor fails in the bare moonlight, or the thick-furred gloom in tempest, or the night of nightingales to turn the crossroads to a ghostly room. And it would be the same were no house near, over all sorts of weather, men and times, aspens must shake their leaves, and men may hear, but not need listen any more than to my rhyme. Whatever wind blows while they and I have leaves, we cannot other than an aspen be that ceaselessly, unreasonably grieves, or so men think who like a different tree. Okay, this is a poem written by Edward Thomas. Let's see, Edward Thomas was born in London. He went to, I think, Battersea Grammar School and St Paul's School. He went to, I think, Lincoln College, Oxford. Um, let's see, I think most of his poetry he wrote in the last couple of years of his life. This poem itself was written in 1915 during the First World War. And this poem is about aspens. Okay, an aspen is a, it is a tall tree. Um, a, um, a, a tall thin tree and he's comparing aspens to poets and he's saying that the the sound of the leaves of the aspens is like the words of the poets and he's using the these trees as a metaphor for the poets so let's see all day and night save winter, every weather. Above the inn, the smithy and the shop, the aspens at the crossroads talk together of rain until their last leaves fall from the top. So these aspens, they talk to each other. The wind blows the leaves and the leaves are talking to each other and they talk all day and all night. They talk in every weather except in winter when all of the leaves have fallen. Yeah, so until their last leaves fall from the top, so they talk to each other until the leaves have fallen in winter and everything's cold and dead. Um, above the inn, the smithy and the shop, the aspens at the crossroads talk together. So the aspens are at the crossroads. Um, and the crossroads perhaps is the centre of life. The crossroads is an important moment in life. Um, the, if, something, if you say something is the crossroads of your life, it's where you decide to go one way or another. This maybe almost alludes to the road not taken by Robert Frost. Um, because the crossroads... You, you have to choose which way to go. And they talk of rain. They talk of all of the things that are happening. Yeah, they talk about the things in the inn, the pub, in the smithy, in the blacksmith, and the shop. Out of the blacksmith's cavern comes the ringing of hammer, shoe, and anvil. 
out of the inn, the clink, the hum, the roar, the random singing, the sounds that for these 50 years have been. So the blacksmith's cavern, I like the way he's used this cavern, a cavern is a cave, and comes the ringing of his hammer, he's banging, and the horseshoe that he's making, and the anvil is the thing that he bangs his hammer down on. So this is the noise of life, this is the hurly-burly of life. Out of the inn, the clink, the hum, the roar, the random singing. So the clink of glasses, the hum of people talking, the roar, drunk people singing at random. The sounds that for these 50 years have been. So these are people down below the Aspens, living their lives, doing their things, and the Aspens are watching, watching what's, what's been happening here below. The whisper of the Aspens is not drowned. Okay, so the Aspens talk together, no matter what is happening in the world of humans, the Aspens are talking to each other. And over lightless pain and footless road, empty as sky, with every other sound not ceasing, calls their ghosts from their abode. So the aspens are talking, and maybe there are no lights in the window, that no one's there, there's no one walking down the road. The whole place is empty as an empty sky, with every other sound not ceasing so they keep talking to each other and they call the ghosts the past perhaps the people who've been killed in the war the the things that used to happen here and the aspens the rustling of the aspen leaves is talking about what has happened what has happened here like a poet might talk about the things that happen the things that go on A silent smithy, a silent inn, nor fails in the bare moonlight, or the thick-furred gloom, in the tempest or the night of nightingales, to turn the crossroads into a ghostly room. So the smithy is silent, the inn is silent, but the aspens or the po or poets continue to talk about things that have passed, the things that were passed. Maybe the blacksmith is dead, or he's, they're talking about things that happened in the past. The inn is silent. Um, and in the bare moonlight or the thick-furred gloom in Tempest. So um, whatever the weather, if it's um, there's moonlight, or if it's dark and there's a, a storm, or during the night of the nightingales, to turn the crossroads into a ghostly room. So the poets and the trees, they talk about the things that have happened in the past. They bring things back to life. Um, and they're talking, to, to, they're talking together. They're singing together, if you like. Um, they are um, able to transform the world. Um, the rustling of the leaves maybe predicts a change and they are they always know what what is going to happen and they call up memories or it would be the same were and it would be the same were there were no house near and it would be the same if there were no houses the trees and the poets would talk about the same thing over all sort of weather, men and times, aspens may shake their leaves and men may hear, but need not listen more than to my rhymes. Okay, so here the um, the, it's clear now to my rhymes. He's talking of the aspens. It's clear that the aspens are the sound of the poet. Um, so it would be the same if there were no houses. Um, the trees which represent the past, the things that have gone. Um, 
over all sorts of weather, men and time. So these trees have seen the past. They know the history. And the poet as well does the same things. Aspens must shake their leaves. The aspens, the trees, shake their leaves. They talk. And men may hear. And people may hear these stories. But they don't have to listen uh, to, 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 to this. Um, so it, the... The poet or the trees, they, they're showing the emotions, the feeling, the history of, of this place. But you can listen or not if you want to. <laughs> Whatever wind blows, while they and I have leaves, we cannot be other, we cannot other than an aspen be. So as a poet, I can only be like these aspen trees. And when whatever wind blows, whatever happens, while the trees have leaves to whisper the stories of people, or I have words to um, tell what has happened, uh, then I have to be an aspen tree. I have to be a poet. I have to explain these things. And I ceaselessly grieve unreasonably i'm ceaselessly sad about the things that have gone and or so men think who like a different tree so unreasonably grieve um may, maybe his other people who don't like his work who like different trees who like different poets who ha think differently may not agree with him and he's here he's admitting that people don't have to li listen to him um, people may listen to him or not they may listen to his words they may listen to his stories they may listen to the aspen trees or they may ignore them um, it depends what you like and what you think so enough if you enjoyed the video, give it a rating, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you soon. Bye for now. Aspens by Edward Thomas.